Welcome everybody, I'm Fabio Viviani and you're watching Fabio's Kitchen where every week we'll bring you an amazing dish made by me. Hello everybody, welcome to Fabio's Kitchen. Today I am particularly excited because I'm gonna show you how to make potato gnocchi. You're welcome. If you wanna send some like a hundred dollar bill just for the sake of sanity, you can send them to PO Box 1353 93021 Moore Park, California. That's probably the ticket that you should pay at least a hundred bucks to me to teach you how to make gnocchi, because you're gonna look like a rock star. Would you spend a hundred bucks to look like a rock star? I would. All right, now moving on with the dish. Potato gnocchi is nothing else than potato that have been cooked and mixed with few ingredients. One thing I wanna get out of the way, first and foremost, is the sauce. Potato gnocchi is so delicious if done right, then the sauce doesn't really matter. I'm gonna do a quick tomato sauce, but again, the sauce doesn't matter, all right? So here's what we have. We have, first of all, I turn on the wrong fire. I gotta turn on that, because that's where the pot is. Turn on that, put a little bit of olive oil. I'm Italian, so a little bit is relative. And then we're gonna put a little bit of pepper, a bit of salt. We're gonna add some cherry tomato to it. Quick, quick sauce. And we're gonna add some basil leaf, like that. Sauce is really quick, like I said. And we're gonna add a little bit of minced garlic, all right? So we got tomato, we got garlic. That's it. You do not need an Italian guy to teach you how to bake a potato. Rasse potato, dirty potato, don't get baby red uh, skin. Get the cheapest, dirtiest potatoes that you can find. Raw potato. Clearly, that's raw, all right? Then, when you get a knife, cut them like, make some incision, like that. I'm reckless, so I don't care about my finger, but you have to be very careful at your house. Don't chop your finger off, because you don't want to be a rock star and wave like this, all right? So just make some incision on the potato, just like this. Put them there and bake them. Bake the potatoes, like that. Now you have baked potato. Keep an eye on your sauce, which now I'm gonna actually turn it down because I want to cook it low and slow. Now, th this is a cooking show, but since it's my cooking show, I can assume whatever I want. And I'm assuming that you know what a baked potato look like. This is a potato that has been baked. It's easy to open, it's fairly moist, and it's cooked, all right? So I'll leave it here. So look at that, I just burned myself. God. All right, so I leave it here so you can look at it, right? Just keep looking at that. You have raw potato, cooked potato. How do you bake a potato? You really wanna know? Fine, you have an oven. Everybody that has the decency to have a kitchen should have an oven. All you have to do, like I said, create some incision and put them in the oven, like 375 for, God, I don't know how big they are, whatever, like 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, 30 minutes. Does it matter? Common sense, it's what matter. And what matter is that they have to be cooked. In order to have a proper baked potato, you have to be able to get these and kind of do like this. So the inside, the flesh is cooked, all right? Once you have that, you have two options. And this is very important. This is the moment where you should be paying attention to me. Also because you just sent me a $100 bill. So make your money work, all right? So here's what you gotta do. Get a potato masher. It looks like, it looks like a, a garlic press, just bigger, because you gotta fit a potato in. You can't fit a potato in a garlic press. Or use a meat grinder, or simply, get a cooling rack for cookies and squeeze your baked potato onto it. I don't care what you do with it, but the outcome has to be this. Cooked, crumbled, baked potatoes. You got that? Do you want make gnocchi by hand like your grandma used to do? Absolutely. Then quit your job, neglect your children, let your pet starve, because gnocchi, as much as many other Italian preparation, takes time, unless you listen to me. So this is what gonna make you achieve gnocchi maneuver really, really fast. First and foremost, flour. Add flour to the food processor. How much flour? 
I don't know how much flour, I play by ears, but we gave you a recipe. There is a recipe with this video. So just read the recipe. And again, that's not a rocket science, because if your potatoes are less cooked than mine, or maybe it's a rainy day outside, the humidity in the air will affect a little bit. So a little bit more, a little bit less. I'll explain you the common sense behind in a minute. Grana Padano cheese. A good pinch of salt, a good pinch of pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg is the reason why I'm in love with eggnog. I actually hate eggnog, but I love nutmeg, and that's why I drink it. All right. Get, get going. Just come behind you. Come here. Come here. You guys can keep rolling. You can be in the video. Hi. This is one of my camera guys. Without them, the show wouldn't exist. What's your name? Daniel. Daniel. Say hello to Daniel. Daniel, get in. The, get up in there. Just look at that, Daniel. See that? You see the, the that? Daniel, you see that? Yes. Just say yes, because otherwise I'll be here all day. All right. Now we gotta mix that. Look at that. We gotta mix that really quick, like that. Okay, Daniel, you can go back there. Thanks, buddy. All right, so now that we have mixed flour, grana padano, mm. nutmeg, salt, and pepper, we can add the main component, potatoes. Most recipe of gnocchi call for eggs. I don't have egg right here, because that's confidence. I am confident that I can balance the humidity of the potato and the, the dryness of the flour and create a perfect dough without eggs. It would it be a good idea if this was plugged in? All right, so how do I, which one is the one that I plugged in here? To the floor. There's to the floor. It doesn't reach the floor. There's, a, there's one on the face of the... There's one on the face. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> I have people doing this for me, right? I know how to do it, but all right. There you go. Look at that. It's probably work now. Let me see. Yeah, of course it works. Electricity. You know, <laughs> what, a, what an invention. You know the $100 bill you send it to me? Take it back and send it to Edison. Literally. We wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. So now all I have to do is to let the dough, the, the, the dough to form by adding potatoes here and by letting the potato kind of mix with the flour, with the flour and the rest of the ingredients, all right? So this will take a minute. So now we have a minute. What are we gonna do in this minute? First and foremost, it's very important that the potato is cold. So when you cook your potato, I strongly advise you not to use hot potato. Hot potato will create steam and will require more flour. Let the potato chill overnight in the refrigerator, all right? So if you see these, the dough is actually coming together. Can you guys see that? You can see that, right? The dough is coming together right now. The beauty of it is that thanks to the paddle attachment, not the whisk, not the hook, this is not dough, this is not whipped cream, this is a gnocchi dough, so you need the paddle attachment. Thanks to the paddle attachment, what we do here is basically creating and mixing, and, and there is really like a, a culinary threesome going on between flour, cheese, and potato, with the help of salt, pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg. If you see here that the cherry tomato has reduced, they're wrinkled up, they look like, they look right now like my grandfather's chin. But, although I love my grandpa, it's not as delicious as this sauce is. And, and all the wrinkle on the skin, it's perfect. I don't like to peel tomato. Uh, I don't mind the little skin on it, I really don't care. The basil, but the sauce, the point is, the sauce is not liquid. It's nice and thick, it's caramelized, it's concentrated tomato flavor. Now, the dough is forming here, and then, the magic is about to happen. Stop. Wrong size. Check this out. What we have right here now, it's a dough. And this dough creates the shape that we need to have a perfect gnocchi. Look at that. If I grab these right now, right? And they go like this and I press them for a minute just to make sure that there is no air inside.
Now I go like this, and I do this. Look. Then I'm going to get another piece. I'm creating this beautiful dumpling by hand. And look at the tomato too. Nice sauce there. And here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to throw this in the water. Get a nice plate for yourself. Sauce is there. Now the best part about gnocchi is that once they float, once the, if you put like, like, I did like 20 inside, once the first couple float, everything else is cooked as well. If you let them float in too much, they absorb too much water and disintegrate. They will disappear. So what we do here, the moment that they're gonna start floating, is the moment I take them all out. And I want you to pay attention to the sauce. You see what happened? There is some bits, burn, odds and end. There is some, some uh, nice caramelization on it. Look at this. All right, beautiful. Now, if you wanna see these, Some of the gnocchi are floating. I want to put them in the sauce so I can saute with the sauce at least once. Look at that. The starches are going to absorb the oil. The oil is going to coat the gnocchi. The tomato, the gnocchi is kind of a similar bite. It's perfect. All right. Once again, finishing with some fresh basil, some grana padano cheese, and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Literally, we made gnocchi. If you don't count the fact that we baked potato for an hour and a half, you can do that the day prior. You can, you can have your dog do that if its dog is smart enough. My dog bakes potato mm -hmm. all the time. And you can have the potato the next day ready for you, waiting in the fridge. And in literally in 15 minutes, you can have ready gnocchi to eat. Look at that. And guess what you're watching? Fabio's Kitchen. You're welcome. Thanks for the hundred. Love it. I'll collect all of them and make more gnocchi.